The Paso Croce Down, at 8.5 kilometers long with an average gradient of 7.8%. It's a nice climb, but it's nothing to write home about. I mean, it's never been decisive in the Giro, for example. But legend has it that it was the scene of a pivotal moment, not in a race, but for cycling as a whole. near to the top now and it can't come any sooner oh god look at my cadence Were it not for the Croce Downy, then I'd not be riding this, but this. It's just a shame that this pivotal moment in cycling couldn't have occurred on a climb that's bathed in year-round sunshine. Let's, let's rewind a little bit. How has one climb changed the whole of cycling. Well, Campagnolo, Tulio, Campagnolo. So legend has it, Tulio Campagnolo was leading a late autumn race over this road in foul conditions in November 1927. In those days, changing gear meant removing your wheel and swapping between one of two cogs. However, the snow had frozen his hands and he wasn't able to remove his wheel. Shouting, Bisogno cambia qualcosa di drio into the wind, he set about doing exactly that. It translates as something must change at the back. He invented the quick release and from there, the modern group set. What misery has he helped us escape? Well, I'm going to find out just how hard was climbing before the invention of gears. Wish me luck. You may notice that I'm not riding a real 1920s bike, but John Cannings has done an excellent job of accurately recreating one. Now the intention was that Cy would come here and ride this. But two things have meant that's not happening. Firstly, over the years at GCN, Cy has broken a lot of priceless historical artifacts. We might have a problem, Mike. No, I think we've got a real problem. And it was considered that it was no time to break anymore. And the other reason is that, well, Cy is allergic to the rain. But fear not because this bike has all the hallmarks of one from the era. So, we've got a rubbish, heavy, flexible steel frame. Tick. Weird handlebars. Tick. Really, really crap brakes. Tick. Toe clips. Rubbish. And, uh, and I've got I've got gears though, two of them, and they're both massive, meaning that I'm just grinding away up these horrible gradients. The early sections of this climb average just over 10% which is considered steep by modern standards with modern gearing. But on this, there's something else. I'm kind of learning that you just have to pedal differently. It's all about strength and just trying to turn the gear over. But it's definitely slower and it's more painful. I'm just gonna have to hope that the gradient eases a bit so that I can keep going and make it to the top. 
Oh, I might just die. Back in the day, they would have never have made it up times like the Anglaru or the Mortirolo. Not because they were lesser athletes, far from it. Just because with this gearing, it would have been impossible. They would have walked. The legendary Campagnolo moment came in the Gran Premio della Vittoria, not the Giro d'Italia. But it's worth talking about the Giro d'Italia of 1927 to give some historical context to the invention. The Giro that year was won by a certain Alfredo Binder, who had incredibly impressive career stats. 41 stages of the Giro d'Italia and 11 Grand Tour victories in total. But what's all the more remarkable is the nature of the race then. So in 1927, the Giro is 3,758 kilometers long, and that was spread over 15 stages. In 2018, when Froome won, it was 250 kilometers shorter and spread over 21 stages. Now, it gets really stark when you realize that Binder's average speed was 26 kilometers an hour. And that meant that his average time per stage was 9.6 hours. If you compare this to Froome in 2018, well, his average speed was 40k an hour, meaning that each stage was just over four hours. In total, to win the Giro, Binder broke 55 hours longer than Chris Froome. And this means that, well, the, the Grand Tours back in the day perhaps had more in common with the ultra endurance events we have now, like the Transcontinental. Oh, an amazing feat, amazing. At the top of the climb, there's a monument to Giulio Campagnolo. I'm gonna pay my respects when I get there. If my knees don't explode. Right, I'm gonna do a gear change now to show you what they had to do back in the day. So on the back, we've got these wing nuts. We've got a cog on this side and a slightly easier cog on this side. It's completely pointless. This one's like, what, a 16, and this one's like a, a 17. Good range. Oh, God, it's stuck. And it, see, I'm finding it really difficult now to get that unstuck. And this is exactly the problem that Tulio Campagnolo had. His hands were cold, my hands were cold, and we're on the same climb. There's something very poetic about this. Now I need to push it out the dropouts to get the chain back on, I can. Now I'm just trying to tighten up this wing nut on the back, on both sides. God, this is difficult. Well, I can tell you that now I've switched into my bailout gear, it feels positively magical riding up this climb. For God's sake. There's Tulio's monument. Oh God, that was really hard. I don't think these brakes are very good at going downhill either. Can I swap back to my bike now, please? Thank God for that. Well, I'm sure it's probably heresy to bring a SRAM equipped bike to a monument for Campagnolo, but I'm sure Tulio would approve of some ETAP action. Although it is slightly ironic that my bike doesn't even have 
quick releases on it. It's got through axles. Sorry about that. Now, when we think back earlier to our story about Campagnolo's light bulb moment, the fact that his very words are recorded in history should make you immediately slightly skeptical as to how much of that is actually fact and how much is poetic license. That skepticism could be well placed. According to research by the eminent cycling historian David Herrily, there was no snowy Gran Premio della Vittoria in 1927. And Campagnolo wasn't even listed as a favourite in any of the editions of the race in the 1920s. More damningly than that, according to Herrily, there isn't even a patent for the quick release in the 1930s. Campagnolo does have them, but therefore smaller improvements to the original design. And the same is true for derailleurs after that. However, let's not deny Campagnolo his place in history. He was a visionary, a true innovator, someone who took existing ideas and made them better. He's also responsible for creating the concept of the group set, something we couldn't imagine cycling without today. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video, if nothing else, just for how cold and wet I got making it. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to GCN. And to see another video where we take on the epic Paso di Nivellet, the climb from the Italian job, then click down here.